Well, folks, it's pouring with rain outside again. We had a bit of fine weather the other day, but that seems to have disappeared. So I'm back in the log cabin now. I've got this Reliant Regal engine here, which hasn't been started for about eight years, something like that. So um, I'm going to try and take the carb off it, see if there's any crap inside it, and then try and get this thing at least fired up to see if it runs, because that's the one I'm going to be putting back in the Reliant Regal. This is the original engine that come out of it. So let's have a look at it. So I did start rebuilding the other engine, but um, that's sitting on the engine stand over in the back. Let's show you. This wasn't the original engine. This was the engine that come with it. And uh, I did strip it all down. I put new uh, piston rings on it and all that, but I left it uncovered and it's full of dust. I've got to strip it down. And also there would be alterations to be made because the, uh, the later engine or the larger engine, the 750cc, is a different engine to gearbox setup than the uh, original so I would have to make some modifications not only that the um, carburetor the starter motor all the ancillaries uh, would have to be uh, sourced and an alternator and a dynamo whatever but this engine as I know it I took it out of the van and it is totally complete so it just needs stripping down and cleaning but we did do a little inspection through the plug holes and found there seems to be some bore wear as well so um, I just wanted to see if it starts up because it was very, very smoky when I bought the van. I bought the van as a runner all them years ago. But just to make sure that it does run and if it's worth pursuing the work done, bearing in mind the engine numbers on this are the same as the uh, the engine numbers in the actual vehicle itself. So it is the original 600cc engine in this. So I'm going to get the carb off and uh, bearing in mind these are all Imperial 7 sixteenths. Yeah, there we go. That's the air filter. Again, I've never had this apart, this. It's just been sitting at the back of the log cabin for all them years. So, um, let's start taking things apart. Now, I do know the chap who had it before me, he did maintain the vehicle and done a lot of work to it. And that air filter inside, I can see, is spotlessly clean. So, that's that out of the way. This has got a little Zenith carburetor on it. Only held on with two bolts there, or two nuts rather, onto the manifold. The choke levers attached there, and what's that there? That's the vacuum advance for the distributor. So I should just be able to undo two bolts there, one there and one around the other side, and that should hopefully lift off. Right, so, let's just try and undo these. Not all that tight. That noise you can hear in the background Folks, that's me uh, diesel heater, keeping me a bit warm at the moment. Old engines used to be so easy to work on. Plenty of space around them. A little spring washer on there as well. There we go. Let's drop that in there. Now I'm hoping I can get around the other side here and just nip that one off. Better lift that off now. There we go. Lift that out of the way. Take that nut off of there. The vacuum advance goes on the bottom, just on the inlet manifold there. Just pull that off of there. There we go. Leave that on the worktop. And that's basically it, folks. That's the carburetor. So I want to get to the float bowl there, which involves me undoing these top screws around that perimeter so I can lift that out and see if there's any crap in there so let's get over to the workshop and do that so before I do anything I'll just give that a bit of a clean off the top there there we go and then the blow off with the airline just so that we don't introduce no crap into there and just undo these one, two, three, four, five screws around the top. All screws the same length, which makes life a lot easier. That's obviously the fuel intake there. There we go, just lift that off. Okay, so that's the fuel inlet there. That's the little needle valve on top. 
which lets fuel in when the float comes up or comes down rather. I've just blown down that and that appears to work. Yep, I've just blown down there. When I push that, it stops the flow. When I let it go, the flow opens up. So that's that works. Little float comes out of there. To be honest with you, there's a bit of corrosion on it, but uh, all in all, it looks pretty much okay. Bone dry inside there. There is a bit of a uh, crusty stuff in the bottom there, as you can see, a bit of crystallization, look. But nothing too disastrous. So there is a diaphragm in there, which I'm not gonna touch at the moment. But there is a main jet there. Which I'm just gonna have out. With a long emulsion tube on it, and as you can see there is um, some corrosion down there, and I can see the bottom holes there is uh, uh, plugged as well, where that corrosion is, so. What I might end up doing is actually stripping this down. So I've just taken out these three long screws there and them two shorter ones there and just lifted that little thing off just to see what was behind there. There is some sort of a diaphragm in there with a little brass plunger. So I may just leave that in situ at the moment. I don't think that's going to affect anything. There is a venturi that comes through into there. But I'll leave that like that. I probably want to get this um, choke cable out of the way. We should just clip out of there. There we go. Like that. And then that little nut there needs to be undone. That's just holding the cable in situ. There we go. Just loosen that off and that cable should pull out of the way. There we go. That's out of the way now. Sure, there's a diaphragm under there which could possibly need coming off so let's undo these four screws yep. okay there we go diaphragm in there little spring I think the rubber looks like it's perished there so that can just come back yeah that's in a bit of a state in there folks look look where the rubbish perished so it probably needs a rebuild kit I would have thought this carburetor there we go it comes out that way yeah that probably needs a new one probably get a service kit for this I'll leave that attached um, I think I can leave the rest as it is to be honest with you there is a I think there's a mixture screw there I'll take that straight out normally I'd measure how many in it is but um, there will be a basic set point for that so let's just take that out that's pretty much it I think the rest can stay as it is right okay let's get it filled up with hot water and then we'll uh, give it an ultrasonic clean right just filled up the um ultrasonic cleaner with hot water from the, from the kettle and I've had to turn the diesel heater down folks look at the heat in here look it's 20 degrees in here it's not outside <laughs> so I've got this um, ultrasonic cleaner solution here and um, it's aluminium safe so you want to obviously uh, check that before you in any solution to your thing that it is not going to melt your your piece or damage it so i'm just going to put a nice glug of that in there there you go we'll take the main body of the carb and drop that in there very hot in that folks let's put it over that way look get it all under water which it appears to be so i'm going to put that on for about half an hour so I'll raise that to 30 minutes and I will put the um, heater on as well and I'm going to turn that on now. There we go. And one other thing I've got to do as well is obviously just give this a bit of a brush down I think as it's been sitting for a hell of a long time. 
So just clean some of this crap off of it. I've got some G101 here, which is a, a cleanser of sorts. I will just stuff that inlet manifold with some uh, rag. I don't want anything sort of falling into there. There we go. Right, let's give this a bit of a brush down, folks. It's gonna get a bit messy, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, just got it out, folks. Where's my glasses? Put them on. Do a little bit of a blow down with the air. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better now. Again, all the rusty bits are still rusty, as you can see. Can't do much about that, I'm afraid. But, uh, there was a main jet in there, I had to take that plug out. I've done that off camera. Straight through there, there was a main jet in the bottom of the actual float bowl, which I've given a clean up. So I'm just gonna put that back in. And to access that, you have to come through that hole there, look. There we go, you see it in there? And that just screws back in the bottom of the float bowl. Like that, so that's that one in. Right, well, I'm just gonna put this back together now. You don't really gotta see that. It's not a carburetor video. I just want to make sure it's pretty clean so we get some fuel through it. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, that's the car put back together now. Let's get it back on and take it from there. It's a little bit tricky this folks because uh, to get that nut on you actually have to lift the carb up because it's got that little shoulder there which you can't screw on so if you basically put the front screw in first and screw that down you ain't going to be able to get the rear nut on so leave the front one undone or even leave it right off that enables you to lift the carb up and then you're able to thread that that nut on that bolt there because as I say you can't get it on just by having the carb seated in that on position sort of thing so that's the way you got to deal with that a little bit tricky and I can imagine it'd be really awkward if you were doing that in the actual car itself trying to take the carb off and I'm out in the open here and I found it tricky so I'm just gonna wind this on right that's that one and get this final one on the front now yeah a little bit tricky that if you don't know again we're just uh, putting this back together just to see if we can get this thing started so I'm pretty pleased now that we've got a clean enough carburetor that we can get some fuel in there without worrying about it being restricted. We've got no throttle cable there. The cable used to come down this pipe here, obviously, but uh, that's long gone, so I'll have to operate it manually. That's the choke there. So when I pull the choke lever there, that shuts the choke off, which is fine. So I'm happy with that. Just gonna replace the uh, vacuum advance pipe on the end of the distributor there just so that works I'm going to take off this distributor cap here because I don't know whether the points will be corroded so let's have a little look in there yeah cap looks okay as I say it was well maintained this vehicle apparently so uh, an old boy had it before me and he did look after it I'll tell you what, I could just do a bit of um, fine emery paper in there. Just got some fine emery paper there. I'll just stick that in the in between the points just to give it a bit of a clean up. Yeah, I think they're all right. Right, so I'm happy with that. As I say, I haven't touched the timing or anything, so we should be okay there. And I'm presuming that the timing's going to be one three four two i haven't checked it so that's probably aiming near number one it rotates that way so number one will be this one up here so that's the shortest one which goes on there so that is facing sort of number one cylinder and that is the shortest plug there so that's going to probably be with number one 
to go on there. Let me just clip that back on, clip the lid back on. And this one should go to number three. So that one should be number four. And that one should be number two. That's one, three, four, two. I presume that's the firing order. I may be wrong, folks, I don't know. So that's that. So these hoses could be in the way. I don't need the fuel connected to the fuel pump because I'll be connecting it directly to the um, carburetor inlet. So if I get that off of there, like that. Right, I just want to get this old pipe clip off. There we go. And just cut off that little old broken pipe there. That's off there. And I've just hung up a little temporary fuel supply which I can hopefully stick on this pipe here. There we go. So that should give us a fuel supply. Okay, so I've just dug the coil out. That was amongst all the spare parts back there. Now this car is positive earth, although the later ones were negative earth. So I've got my battery here. I've connected the, uh, the big cable to the earth to the positive on the battery. And I've got this cable here from the starter motor. So there's my positive. That's the positive there, as you can see, look, positive earth. And that goes straight down to the chassis or the engine, so to speak. So that's positive. Now I want to check whether the starter motor works. So this should hopefully, I think this pulls in and engages the gear. So by just flashing this on there, uh, this is a negative now. So I should get a, at least a, the starter motor should spin folks. Which it does, but it's not pulling in. Right, okay, so I think as that spins, I thought that centrifugally pulled in and that turned the engine over, I'm not too sure. So I may have to take this out, this might have seized up, I'm not sure. All right, so I know this spins freely, but this end here, I think if I hold that and turn that, there we go, it's a bit stiff. That should pull inwards, I presume, and latch up with the, the flywheel, which it's not doing. So maybe I need to, just put a bit of lubrication on that. When that spins, I thought that sort of, sort of mesh. Let's have a little go again. Let's put some lube in that. All right, let's open it up first of all. We'll just put some WD in there for the moment. Just to sort of loosen some things up a little bit. So I'm sure that should move freely. Hey, I start, oh, look at it. That's moving a lot more freer now, folks, look. So maybe it needs to go in and out a bit quicker than that. Just want to see if that travels okay, you know. Hey, look, it's sort of going now, isn't it? Let's try and flash it again and just see if it engages the engine now. No. I thought as that span, that should pull in. Trying to go then. Normally, this is done through a solenoid, you know. It's starting to move. You see the gap separating now. Look, there we go. It's turning the engine, folks. It's not returning. So, I think it's all just sticky in there, you know? Now I'm gonna be taking the uh, clutch out and all that, so let's just put some squirt in there. Well, that was uh, encouraging. So maybe it's just all seized up. It's getting freer now. Oh yeah, look, it's getting a lot freer now, folks. Let's try again. Yeah, that's better. Although it's not disengaging. So it just needs a bit more lube, I think. 
That's definitely a lot more freer now. Look at that, look, so easy now, look. There we go. Yeah, see, it's just not popping out again. I mean, the engine's very easy to turn over. So we're getting there. Before I started the engine, I did a, an oil dipstick check just to make sure that it had oil in it. And if you can see, right up there, look, if I just wipe that dipstick, watch where the mark is. It should be down there somewhere, look. Right down there. So it's got about that much. It's near enough being doubled in oil. If the reason why it was initially smoking is because it had too much oil in and it was blowing it through past into the uh, past the piston rings and all that. So I may have found a possible problem, but we do know there is ball wear anyway. Right, let me have a little play about with this a bit further and I'll come back to you. Right, I just connected the uh, fuel line up to there, as you well know, folks. I've just turned the fuel on and it's pouring out of this diaphragm, which I said had perished. Whenever you operate the throttle, I don't know whether you can see it. You can see the petrol coming out of there, look. Pouring out of there, right over the top of the exhaust. So there's nothing I can do about that. I haven't got a spare diaphragm, but what I have got is a spare carburetor which I've just found. Now this one is off of a 750 apparently. It's the same, it looks virtually the same, so it is the same. So I'm gonna try and bolt this one on folks. And this one's got a modification on it, it must be off of a later model because that um, has got a cutout there where the earlier carb which I've got on hasn't got a cutout, look. So you can just slide it in and out. Whereas that one there hasn't got that cutout, look. So I'm just gonna quickly whip this carb off, put the new one on and uh, we'll try that. Okay, so I've put the other carb on now. That went on pretty easily. I'm going to drain some of this oil out because it's it's far too much. So um, I've got my pump extractor here, which is connected up obviously to a, a big pumping vessel there. And rather than drain out of the drain plug there, I can't really get it in the dipstick, but I've got this breather crankcase pipe there, which I can just pull out there. And I'm hoping that I can just stick my tube into the crankcase there which i can and then start pumping and hopefully draw some oil out there we go right i'm going to pump some of this out folks and then we'll uh, come back to when i've done that right okay so i've drained some out now let's see if we're down to level and as you can see there that's the level there instead of being right up there where it was so i'm happy with that right that's another thing done. Right, our coil should be energized. The distributor should be energized. If I need to quickly dismantle it, I can just pull that apart and that take the feed off the coil. So if I spin this up, I don't know what's gonna happen here, folks, to be honest with you. We're playing it by ear, the choke's on. Right, the solenoid's not pulling quite in again. All right, let's try again. Might not be enough juice in this battery. right nothing i've connected the exhaust up by the way the exhaust is actually on let's try and poke some um easy start down the the throttle body and open the throttle a little bit and see if it kicks off right because uh we don't know do we let's have another go right that's the throttle right okay nothing at the moment let's get my test meter out so we go with negative and positive at the battery which we've got a light that's negative connected there so i should have positive there 
which we have, we've got 12 volts there. We should have 12 volts there, which we have. Yeah, that's energized, the circuit's complete. Yep. We basically I think it should be firing. So we'll try again. Let's give a bit more down that throat of that carburetor. Do you know what I'm quite partial to do? I think I'm possibly going to take a spark plug out and see if we've got any spark there. That will prove something, won't it? So, we we'll take that one out. That's hopefully, as I say, if I've got the starting order in the right order. That might be wrong. It might not be 1342. I should check the manual, shouldn't I? We'll see if we've got spark here first. And if we have, that's the next thing I'm going to check. Down there like that. And try that again. Right, we haven't got a spark. So we've got no spark, folks. So let me just open up the distributor cap. Take that off. And we've got ignition, so if I pull them pints open and shut, we should see a spark. And we haven't. We've got no spark, folks. Right, well, I don't think we're going to get it running in this video, folks, but um, we're getting there. I just want to see this thing kick off, and uh, it might be a condenser problem on that. So uh, stick with us anyway. We'll come back in part two of this one, and we'll see if we can get this running just to kick off. And in that, main, in that meantime, I'll order a new carb seal gasket set for that carburetor, and uh, we'll take it from there. Anyway, just a little tinkering video on the uh, Reliant Regal engine. Uh, we're just having a bit of fun here really, so I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.